Espresso Week. And today we are looking at Cafe Vita's Cafe Del Sol. This is their flagship espresso. And as with all espresso reviews, we're going to take a look at how I brewed the coffee, what flavor notes came through, how it performed in milk, and then at the end of the review, we'll give it a wattage score to let you know if it's something you should spend your hard-earned cash on. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Cafe Vita, a coffee roasting company. Uh, I didn't really know much about them, but they apparently have uh, cafes and roasteries from LA to New York, so a rather a, a large operation. Uh, this coffee right here, retail costs $16 with shipping, you're like $18, $50, $20 depending on where you live. So about an average, about an average cost uh, for an espresso. Um, the when I went to the website, it didn't give any insights onto how they recommended to brew it. So we'll talk about my standard brewing methods and kind of where I went from there. Uh, as with most coffees, where they don't recommend a certain brewing method, sometimes I'll call the cafe just to get an idea of how they're brewing it in house, and then mimic that here, and then kind of manipulate it to see if I can get a better taste. Um, but in this case, I actually didn't uh, even take the time to call the cafe, and we'll get into that a little bit, into that reason a little bit later. Um, listed as um, Central American, Indonesian, and African. Uh, it said there are some washed and natural processed coffees. If I had to guess, the natural process would be the African, probably most likely an Ethiopian natural processed coffee, and then the washed would be the Central American, um, and then Indonesian typically would be washed, but it could go one way or the other um, as far as a natural. I don't know that I've really ever had a natural Indonesian. A listed as having uh, notes of butterscotch, praline, and chocolate. Uh, deep and silky amber crema with a sweet caramel finish. I had a really hard time brewing this coffee. So what do I mean by that? Um, it was all over the place. It was really, really hard to dial in. And when you only have a 12 ounce bag, you can't waste a lot of coffee to really get it dial in. You know, you're gonna waste two or three shots where you're gonna readjust your grind and pull it through before you kind of really have to start tasting it um, because otherwise it can get quite expensive. And the reason, the, one of the main reasons is, is I found that the coffee was very water soluble. Um, so what do I mean by water soluble? All coffees are water sol soluble, right? That's how we get coffee, that's how we are able to brew it. But this coffee, um, when it's really water soluble, you really have to back your grind off because it just soaks up like a sponge and it makes it really hard for the grind to pass through. So if you have a really, really fine grind, um, you, it kind of turns to mud and you won't be able to push the coffee through. So on my Forte, um, I kind of have my standard parameters where I know I have a couple coffees that I work with very regularly and I always kind of keep as back, keep as backup coffees between when I try a new bag of coffee. And every time I can set my grinder to a specific setting, uh, weigh, measure it, and it comes out every time just like I want. And on the coffees that I'm really, two coffees from I'm really familiar with, I really have to use these because I just know what works and how to pull them. So those two coffees is one is the hometown blend from Sweet Bloom Coffee Roasters, and then the other, of course, um, as some of you know, I have a really good relationship with the guys over at Two Rivers and their Confluence blend. So those are two of my kind of backup go-to coffees that I go to back, back and forth because I just know really well. So with this coffee being so water soluble, I had a really hard time dialing, dialing the brew parameters in. So my standard brew parameters are 18 and a half grams in, 36 grams out. This coffee, I just could not find that right brew parameter. Um, so I would get it dialed, I'd get it really close. You know, I'd be at uh, 18 and a half in, 36 out at around say 30, 31 seconds. So a little longer. Um, I noticed even on when I would, if, when I'd sample it with the VST, it would be slightly over extracted. Uh, so a little bit too much contact time and that much coffee, you know, we'd be pushing 20.5%. 20, 20 so close to that perfect 20% extraction, but kind of again, getting a little bit too much extraction. And then the next day I would come in and it would, the same grind setting, the same coffee, and it would pull in 20 seconds. And so then I'd think, okay, well, what, what can affect that? Generally it's weather, um, you know, if it gets really cold or, if you know you get a lot of humidity in the air, you can kind of get these wide, wide temperature swings or 
moisture swings more importantly, which will then affect how your coffee brews and you kind of have to redial it in. So most of your specialty cafes, they dial their shots in every morning because those things will affect how the coffee is poured. So if you go to a good roastery and a good cafe, they should be dialing their shots in every morning to compensate for those weather swings. However, a lot of times, you know, it's one or two micro adjustments and then you're back on spot, back on point. Here I was all over the place um, having to adjust that grind and, and really just getting it to pull through. And so I can't really tell you too much if these notes come through because it was really hard to dial in and get a consistent shot day in and day out to really drink and taste the coffee and then maybe change the recipe to see if I could push some of these uh, cocoa or praline notes um, further further out. So that was the first problem. Very, very water soluble. Um, it wasn't the weather because I went back, so I basically switched coffees, went back to one of my tried and true coffees that I know really, really well, no problems. Same recipe, same grind settings, same uh, tamp, everything would pull right away. Um, and the tamp also brings up another another good point. So a lot of times um, with a coffee that is not water soluble, you know, that's kind of a, if you get like a coffee that's more of a Nordic roast, um, you can just do a really light tamp, make sure it's flat, it's good, and then pull the shot, and you'll be in, it'll be you'll get a pretty good extraction. Sometimes with the more water soluble ones that are a little bit darker, you kind of have to whiskey tamp. Um, so when you put this in, you kind of roll the edges, and this just helps to seal the puck on the edge of your port filter so that you don't get channeling on the outside. Um, with this coffee, if you did just the regular tamp, it'd pull way too fast. If you did the slightest whiskey tamp just to seal those edges, it would almost double your, your pour time. So again, trying to find that perfect adjustment on the grinder with the perfect tamp setting, I just didn't have enough coffee. Um, you know, I would have needed to order probably five pounds of this coffee, went through 12 ounces just getting it dialed in. And again, that's not very cost effective, especially if you're not very familiar with coffee. You're not gonna waste $20 just trying to figure out how to dial it in so you can enjoy it. Um, so again, as far as brew, ease, ease of brew for a new coffee, uh, something new to specialty coffee and getting into learning the art of espresso, I just couldn't recommend this coffee. Really, really hard to, to work with. Um, I may, after I try a few, I've got a couple other coffees in the queue that I want to try first, so I may come back to this one and see if it's the same thing. So to give this coffee a final wattage score, I'd give this coffee, honestly, a 100 watt score. Um, so mostly, I wouldn't waste your money on it, at least not right now. Uh, it was just really, really hard to work with. So if you are just getting into the art, if you're just now getting into learning how to do espresso and you got your first full manual espresso machine and you're really trying to learn this art, this is gonna be a difficult coffee to, to work on, uh, work on and, and learn from just because you're gonna have to spend so much money dialing it in. Anodyne Coffee Roasters, um, they have a, an espresso that I think is perfect for beginners, has just this beautiful chocolate nutty base and not a lot of acidity. So if your recipe's not on point, you're still gonna have a great drinking experience and it's gonna encourage you to keep perfecting your espresso craft. Um, whereas this coffee is just so hard to work with, it would be hard and hard to replicate that I just couldn't recommend it. So again, overall, as far as flavor profile goes and how easy it was to work with, I'd give it a score of about 100 watts, which means I wouldn't waste your money on it quite yet. So if you have any other coffees you'd like to check out or you'd like to review, uh, please leave them in the comments below. And if you like what I'm doing on these uh, espresso reviews, the best way you can support me is go to www.bikealatteco.com and of course purchase the pre-ride cold beer which helps to fund this and keep us going. So again, uh, thanks again for checking this out and we'll see you next week.